Good afternoon. My name is Augusta Kivunzia. I work for the county government of Kitui. And um, today I'm presenting a presenting national strategy for prevention and control of anthrax in humans and animals in Kenya, 2021 mm -hmm. to 2036, and um, bring this on behalf of zoonotic disease unit. Uh, anthrax is a zoonotic disease caused by bacillus anthracis, it's a bacterial disease. And in Kenya, it is ranked the topmost zoonotic disease. This is based on systematic analysis of the burden of the disease, socioeconomic impact, severity of the disease and the potential to cause outbreak. Based on uh, records review from the veterinary department and public health from the national level, it has indicated that uh, more than 10 outbreaks occur every year in Kenya with a spillover to human to human. And this data is based on surve passive surveillance However, it is considered to be underestimating the outbreaks because of this uh, nature of surveillance, some of the outbreaks may go unreported or they are detected very late. Lack of one health strategy for control of anthrax has been noted in a number of uh, reports. The OIE Performance Veterinary Service Report 2018 and the WHO Joint External Evaluation 2017 have been have noted the lack of one health strategy in control of anthrax, and therefore recommendations were meant to develop and implement one health to implement anthrax strategy. The objective of this strategy is to eliminate human anthrax and reduce the incidence of anthrax in animals to less than 1% of the baseline of 2021 by the year 2036. This strategy was uh, developed through a consultative meeting, drawing uh, stakeholders from the academia, from the relevant ministries, and from non-governmental organization. A series of meetings were held, drafts were developed, were reviewed, and uh, validated through workshops. The strategy is based on uh, guiding principles that anthrax prevention and control requires a multisectoral and multidisciplinary collaborative approach. And effectively, it e effectively reduces the negative impact on public health and national economy. And it involves breaking the cycle of infection. And that community is key in the prevention and control of anthrax. Uh, committee, coordination committees will be developed at the national level, at the sub-county level, and the county levels. And these committees will involve various stakeholders from the government ministries, from the county government, the national government, will also involve professional bodies such as KVA and KMA, farmers and community-based organizations. Mm -hmm. Other stakeholders will involved will be the regional and the national stakeholders. And all these will work to guided by certain thematic area as we discuss as we go on. The anthrax and prevention control strategy will have seven pillars on which uh, its implementation will be based. One, coordination, collaboration, and partnership. And the objective of this is to enhance collaboration between ministries and other partners and NGOs to ensure that anthrax is well prevented and controlled. Two is surveillance reporting systems and outbreak response. During implementation of this strategy, the existing surveillance system will be enhanced is to ensure that we receive timely reporting of outbreaks and also responds to any outbreak before it spills to the humans. Third will be prevention and control of anthrax. This is both in animals, wildlife, and in human. The objective will be to ensure that 
vaccines for vac vaccines are available, quality vaccines that are av available and affordable to the communities. And also that guidelines on ensuring that uh, any cases confirmed of anthrax are well handled to prevent con contamination of the environment and also infection of humans. Resource mobilization, this will be done uh, through advocacy, holding meetings, seeking to get funds, which will be very key in implementation and control of this strategy. Re-communication will be key, and the main objective is to increase awareness across the communities, which will be very important while controlling anthrax. Six will be conduct, promote operational and applied research. These uh, studies will be very important as they will help us to get data and inform on the progress on the implementation of this strategy. Then the seventh one would be anthrax diagnostics, laboratory capacity. The objective of this pillar is to ensure that the capacity of the laboratories, both regional and national, they were announced such that they can confirm any anthrax cases as well as promote networking of labs both in the human and the public, such that they can share information on anthrax. The implementation of anthrax elimination strategy will follow four phases. These phases will systematically eliminate or reduce the cases in, human, in animals, aiming at elimination of the disease in humans. And in each phase, we'll have a set of activities which will be synchronized to ensure synergy and leverage. In stage one, which will run from 2021 to 2023, to involve the preparation and option, and option phase, which will be phase one. And in this phase, it is assumed that anthrax is present, but the socioeconomic uh, impact is not known. The burden of the disease is not known. Then stage two, it will involve the implementation of the strategy in the high risk zones, which will run from 2024 to 2027. In this uh, phase, the situation is that we know the disease impact, the burden, we have implementation plan in place and from that uh, implementation plan, we'll have identified areas where anthrax is more causing more burden, and these will be the high risk areas. And this is where the, implement, the implementation of the strategy will start to eliminate human anthrax in these areas. As we move to stage three, where the implementation of the strategy will be, uh, will be done across the country already from 2028 to 2032. In this stage, we'll sustain the efforts we have done in phase two and apply the lessons we have learned in the high risk zones and now control this disease across the whole country. Then phase four, this is the stage where anthrax will be eliminated in humans such that we have zero case of human cases and rare cases in livestock. In phase one, this is where most of the activities will be done because we do not know exactly the burden of the disease and a number of things have to be put in place to implement, to operationalize the strategy. And one will start with developing guidelines and standard operating procedures which will enable us to operationalize this strategy. Uh, guidelines such as vaccination guidelines, treatment guidelines, among others. Then we'll strengthen surveillance to ensure that we receive all the data or the outbreak on timely and also response to any 
outbreak. We'll also have a resource mapping and resource mobilization, where in this we have to develop um, resource mobilization plans, have meetings and advocacy meetings in the national, national and the county governments and other stakeholders to source for funds to implement the strategy. Prevention and control measures in both human, animals, and wildlife to ensure that there is no um, spillover of the, the disease to humans and also contamination of the environment. We'll also um, develop communication plans, identify the audience, and also um, the communication channel will be identified at this stage and also conduct uh, research so that we may identify the high risk and the low risk areas and also know and understand the economic burden of anthrax in the country. It is at this stage that we'll also form the elimination committees. At the national level, we'll have the national prevention and control committee, which will be a subcommittee of the zoonotic technical working group and zoonotic disease unit will be the secretariat. This committee will coordinate and oversee anthrax prevention control across the country. This committee will also have members from the international, regional, and other national partners. At the county level, a similar committee will be formed, which consists of which will be called the county zoonotic committee. And the county one health units will be the secretariat. They will be reporting direct to the National Prevention Committee and Control Committee, which will in turn will, re will report to the Nordic Technical Working Group. And this group will now report to the ministries of agriculture, livestock and fisheries, the Minister of Health. At the sub count level, similar committee will be formed, which will be direct to the communities where the implementation will be taking place. And the information will flow now from the community to the sub county level, to the county level, to the national level. Uh, high risk areas will be identified, but from the review of records, although uh, this anthrax is endemic in the country, it has been reported in some counties more often than others. And it's from that review that this map was developed. Start Narok, Kiambu, Meru, Nyeri had reported more anthrax cases in the past five years than other counties. And these were identified as the high risk areas where the pilot of this anthrax strategy will be developed, will start being implemented. However, in the first phase, through the op operational research, the risk map of anthrax will be developed. And now it will be updated in the strategy, which will be the real risk map for anthrax and will be used for implementation of this strategy. Within these areas where anthrax will be occurring, there will be hotspots. And this will range from one to 50 kilometers based on production systems. Low risk areas will have, will have those areas where anthrax outbreaks has not occurred in the last five years. However, if anthrax outbreaks occurs in these areas, it will be now classified as high risk areas and activities taking place in the high risk areas will now be done in that area. Phase two, it is assumed that all structures have been, infrastructures be put in place. And now we are ready to start implementation of the strategy. And this implementation will start in the high risk zones where advocacy, communication, and social mobilization will be done. Vaccines will be procured, distributed. And drugs cases will be collected. Data on outbreak will be collected and fed to national anthrax database. Assessment of economic cost analysis intervention will be done. 
Outbreak investigation and response will be done as well as communication across the counties and across the border. And impact of the vaccination will also be assessed as well as vaccination zero survey and also training of the human and the veterinary personnel to ensure that they understand the control of anthrax. To move from this phase to the next phase, we will ensure that some indicators will be used to show that we need to move to the next step. And this will include vaccination of 80% of the livestock in the high risk areas. And three rounds of vaccination will be key during that period. That any outbreaks which will be reported in that phase at least 80% of these outbreaks are laboratory confirmed and reduce the incidence of anthrax in both human and livestock by 50% of the baseline. Also redu reduce the anthrax case of human livestock wildlife interface by 50% of the baseline. At phase three, it will aim to sustain the achievement of the stage two and this is where we'll be implementing the anthrax prevention control strategy across the country. And here we'll apply the lessons which have been learned in the high risk areas. And they, the activities will include advocacy, communication, and social mobilization, item surveillance to make sure we get information on time of N outbreaks, vaccination figures sustained livestock vaccination. We'll review and update the national anthrax risk map and evaluate the effectiveness of programs or the intervention which will be applied as well as communication across the counties. To move from this phase, to the last phase, the instance of anthrax in animals and livestock will have reduced by 80% of the baseline, as well as reduction of human livestock wildlife interface by 80%. And the country will have at least vaccinated 80% of the susceptible animals against anthrax. Elimination of anthrax in humans will be the last phase. And this will be defined by having no human anthrax in a certain region. And in this region, there will be surveillance going on to make sure that there's no human case which is missed. At the same time, there will be sustained elimination activities in areas where the anthrax cases will be reported. These areas which have not reported anthrax cases at least for two consecutive years will be declared as anthrax free. This implementation will monitored and evaluated both internally and externally. And for the internal monitoring, it will be, there, it will be led by the zoonotic disease unit, whereby they have developed, developed uh, very, very, very viable indicators. They will measure the progress and assess the achievement of the program in line with the strategy. While external evaluation will be independent to assess the program and identify any modifications. We want to acknowledge this uh, organization for financial support while developing this strategy. Thank you. And this is the strategy. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. I am sure that uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Nanyingi, was happy to see the strategy. Cindy Nanyingi, Mark. All right. Now, uh, just a few questions for you, I uh, think, uh, which might be critical for you to address before we move on to the next session. One, uh, a former DVS, Dr. Kisangewa, is asking the strategy has moved to 2021 to 2036. What has shifted? Maybe you might not be the competent authority to answer. 
but uh, there's a DVS representative who might help you. Uh, the second bit of it is uh, we are in the preparatory adoption phase, which should run from 2021 to 2023. 2021 is over, 2022 might be lost due to elections. How far have you done the preparations? Again, uh, you can pick those together. And the last bit of it is, uh, is there any role for private sector in the strategy? And have they been sensitized, engaged? Because I think a lot of strategies have been developed internally as a government, but maybe the, to drive PPPs, private sector that might need to play an important role need to also be engaged and is that part of the process. And lastly, uh, there was a question by Maureen uh, and Edda, the challenges in getting vaccines and essentially the, 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 the strategy is hinged on vaccinating a certain number of the population. So would you have any comments around the vaccines and vaccination bits of it? I'm sure Dr. Ayas might be able to put in one or two, but we'll start with uh, 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 Augusta, then Dr. Ayas can put in one or two, then we can close the session, so. Th thank you for the questions. Um, we, have, we are in phase one, and we have uh, take, undertaken some of the activities. We have developed um, guidelines and uh, we are developing the risk map, as well as um, preparing to undertake other activities as in the near future. Uh, we have involved the, sec the private sector during the development of the strategy, and is also one of the key stakeholders which will be involved in implementation of this strategy. Uh, we aim at vac vaccinating at least 80% of the population, and we believe that uh, this will build uh, the adult and such that uh, this will be um, eight, uh, 70 to 80% vaccination coverage is always uh, said to be effective in control of our disease. Thank you. Can request Dr. Yas to chip in. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Dr. Kibunzia for the good presentation on the anthrax strategy. Uh, mine uh, is to react to the comments uh, that have come in. Uh, the, one was the question of when will it start? I, I would say it has already started in the sense that for us to come up with a strategy, there's a lot of epidemiological work that had already been undertaken. So the first phase of knowing um, the extent of the threat of uh, anthrax in the country, the risk factors and all that has been undertaken. And from there is when we now moved to developing the, the strategy itself. So it's evidence-based. Um, the various uh, um, pillars that have come up are based on evidence that has been collected over a long time. Uh, the, Strategy itself has not been officially launched, but we are planning to have it done within the next coming one month. With the launch of the document, we'll now go full steam ahead to do the rollout with the, our country. The challenge is that we have 47 governments. Disease control is devolved. The money to do the control is out there in the counties. So we have to convince them that this is a priority and that they need to now work on it uh, as uh, uh, one of the key deliverables in the coming uh, years. The private sector role, again, with the launch, we expect that we will bring them on board. They will be uh, part of the people who will be invited to the launch key private sector people so that they can contribute, they can take it home and look for their niche within the, with the programs that are there. Um, I, I, I must admit vaccines can be a challenge. Uh, 
but we do expect that once the counties take it up and they put it in their CIDP as one of the activities, we can then work with them to um, access the vaccines. Uh, the OIE has made a good offer that they can uh, supply vaccines at a very good cost if we go as a country. So we can take the various requirements of the counties and approach the OIE and get the vaccine at a very reasonable cost. Yeah, have I answered? Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, Daksari. I think uh, more can be you can be engaged on, on, on the chat for more. And I'm sure your office is accessible. So those of us who are interested can easily also get to that uh, space.